Harold, what's that from? That's uh, one of the tunes from The Wiz, um, the Broadway show, now the movie, um, If You Believe. This man arranged and co-produced Star Wars, songs, Close Encounters, and, and the disco and, uh, version of Babyface. He created the hit single from The Wiz, is, uh, because and you go so to Harold Wheeler when you want a crossover treat. So it was written kind of as I did it, as a ballad, very pretty. Uh, I'm doing it for a country artist. Uh, which has to be which is one whole way of treating it and then I'm, I'm also doing it as a, a disco record it's hard to conceive of something so beautiful being a disco record but <laughs> can be treated in a lot of ways. When you say treat, and we, we go deep into the sociology and the history and the roots of America, mm -hmm. including all races. Wh what do you see happening that is, that is producing, quote, these different treatments? Some people call it crossover or reverse crossover. All right, well, actually, uh, well, just in these three treatments that I've mentioned here, which is pretty much one which we call middle of the road, uh, which I guess plays to an older audience, uh, over 35, and the country, of course, country music has its own market, which um, has very little crossover value. In other words, the only people that really listen to country music are people that love country music. And most of your other radio stations don't play country music. Uh, there's a disco format now where certain radio stations are going just, just disco. And there's your general pop market, which uh, I think is your strongest crossover market. I mean, there it's... Music is really, it's, it's colorblind. I mean, um, oftentimes you can't tell whether the artist is black or white. It's all about how you really treat it. I think the strings and horns years ago were never used in R&B music, um, so it had a basic Afro quality about it. Now most of your black music does incorporate strings and horns, which gives it a, a pretty quality and makes it something, uh, I think, much, you know, it gives it also to what we call the crossover value, where, which makes it colorblind. I mean, uh, uh, pretty music is pretty music. Could you start off with something as an example that's heavy on the bottom and lighten it up and show us the, the, the gradual progress of it? Right. Uh, okay, what I'll have to do since I only have two hands for that, <laughs> I'm going to sing like a, almost a string line. I'll play you an R&B, R&B-ish type thing. Uh, rhythm and blues, black oriented, and uh, play a few bars of that, and then sing something over the top of that, which kind of washes it and puts it into another level. I'll try to do it. <laughs> And uh, you've taken the earthiness, the earthy basic quality, out of the R&B. You've added uh, a more lyrical quality to it, which again would then give it more appeal to, say, your white stations. And this is something that, in the record industry, we do purposely sometimes to allow a record to have a crossover value. To it. Comparing any of the percentages with the black population of 11 percent, and you can easily see that the black consumer and artist contribute disproportionately high to this segment of the economy. The Black Music Association, prestigious blacks in the industry, point to these facts and conclude that while black music is the basis for American music, black artists don't benefit proportionately. But executive levels in record companies are opening up to more blacks because of the huge black consumer market. However, they tend to be limited to marketing black music. Race becomes a, a very strategic factor in marketing, doesn't it? Yes. Why is race so important in marketing strategy? Well, because, to be quite honest, I think there's a lot of money involved. It's like anything else. Uh, the giant piece of the pie goes to the white artist, and a smaller piece of the pie goes to the black artist. Uh, whites, in general, control white radio, and, of course, there are only a few black radio stations. So with the white artist, there is much more exposure once he goes on the 
top 40 radio stations across the country. Uh, black uh, artists, they only have approximately 100 major radio stations for exposure and maybe 100 secondary radio stations for exposure. Music is coming right down the middle today. Our musical melting pot of middle of the road, pop, rhythm and blues, country and disco is at the same time different and the same. Some experts call the merging of black and white musical styles a homogenization, which will cut across the color line. In order to sell it, the record companies see the hard, cold facts of a segregated society, one equal and one unequal. And the understanding of that fact is the basis for marketing. Now that's the difference. The same is our appreciation for good music with a universal appeal. With it, we become more accepting of differences and more intolerant of phony social, racial, and economic barriers. Pure country, pure soul, and pure pop will always be with us. So we will have always the new American music. So as a French philosopher said, la plus que change, la plus même chose, or the more things change, the more they remain the same.